Imagine a king who lived for almost a century and ruled a kingdom that prospered for generations. It is the story of King Pepi II, the last great king of the Old Kingdom in ancient Egypt. Despite ascending to the throne at the age of six, Pepi II reigned for an astounding 94 years, making him the longest reigning king in Egyptian history. But his story is more than a tale of longevity. His life and legacy remains a mystery with many unanswered questions and conflicting narratives. It is a testament to the resilience, creativity, and strength of a civilization that has existed for thousands of years. Please hit the like button, share, and subscribe to the channel. You'll never miss a video and help us deliver even more great content. Click that like button and sign up today. King Pepi II, also known as Nefertari, was born to Queen Akensepepi II and King Pepi I, the fifth pharaoh of the sixth dynasty of Egypt in 2284 BC. Pepi II was the last king of the Old Kingdom period, which lasted from 2686 BC to 2181 BC. Pepi II's father, Pepi I, was a successful ruler who managed to maintain stability in the kingdom, in part by forming alliances through marriage with powerful aristocratic families. Pepi II may have been educated by the best tutors and scholars of his day in preparation for his eventual role as ruler of Egypt. According to historical records, the lineage of King Pepi II is still a matter of controversy. While traditional belief holds that he is the son of Pepi I and Queen Akhetsenpepi II, recent findings suggest otherwise. The Annals of the Southern Saqqara Stele records that Merenre reigned for at least a year, and that several royal seals and six dynasty stone blocks were discovered in the mortuary temple of nun emperor Akhetsenpepi II. These stones show that she also married Merenre after Pepi I's death and became the king's main wife. Inscriptions on these rocks endow Anketsenpepi II with royal titles. Therefore, many Egyptologists today believe that Pepi II was likely the stepchild of Merenre and Queen Anketsenpepi II. Pepi II ascended the throne at a very young age. There are documents that he was only six years old when he became king. His mother, Anketsenpepi II, may have acted as regent during his early years, with the help of her brother, Jaw, who had been vizier under the previous pharaoh. Despite Pepi II's long reign, only three sculptures of him are known to exist. Some scholars argue that the relative scarcity of royal statues shows that the court's ability to retain skilled artisans has declined. However, one of these sculptures offers a rare glimpse into the pharaoh's early years, as it depicts a young Pepi II, dressed in regal attire, sitting on his mother's lap. Perhaps the most fascinating insight into Pepi II's personality can be found in a letter he wrote to Harkov, governor of Aswan and the head of one of the expeditions he sent to Nubia. In the letter, the young king expressed his excitement at catching a dwarf and asked Harkov to bring him back alive so that he could serve as an entertainer at the court. The letter is kept as a long inscription on Harkov's tomb and is considered the first travel diary. It gives us a fascinating insight into the pharaoh's thinking, even as a child, and hints at the kind of ruler he would later become. Pepi II, the longest reigning pharaoh in Egyptian history, had a colorful love life with many wives. One of his wives, Neith, was not only his wife, but also the mother of his successor, Menrenre Nemtiemsaf II. It is believed that Neith may have been Pepi II's cousin and half-sister, as her mother may have been Ankensepepi I. Another wife of Pepi II was Iput II, his half-sister and daughter of Merenre Nemtiemsaf I. Ankesen Pepi III was also one of Pepi II's wives and the mother of King Nefertari. Ankesen Pepi IV was another wife of Pepi II and the mother of King Nefertari, although he is uncertain about which Nefertari. Ujeptin was also the wife of Pepi II and daughter of Pepi I. Mevertides IV was originally thought to be Pepi I's wife, but it is now known that she was one of Pepi II's concubines and Pepi's daughter. Each of these queens, Neith, Iput, and Ujeptin, had their own small pyramids and mortuary temples as part of the king's pyramid complex at Saqqara. Pepi II also had two sons known as Nebkahor Idu and Thasepsis. These sons are from different wives, although it is not clear who. 
King Pepi II's reign as Pharaoh of Egypt lasted a staggering 94 years, making him the longest reigning monarch in recorded history. However, his reign was not without its challenges and difficulties, especially in the years that followed. Although young, Pepi II's reign was marked by stability and prosperity, with the kingdom experiencing a period of cultural and artistic flourishing that previous dynasties could not match. Under his rule, Egypt continued to expand its influence beyond its borders, with military campaigns in Nubia and Libya bringing new territories and resources under Egyptian control. Wadi Maghare of Sinai produces valuable copper and turquoise, while Hatnu produces high-quality alabaster. The Phoenician city of Byblos was one of the regions where Pepi II traded, as evidenced by the inscriptions found there. To the south, Pepi II enjoyed a lucrative trade relationship with Nubia, with Harkhuf leading several expeditions to procure goods such as frankincense, ebony, animal skins, and ivory. The western desert was also an important trade route, with several roads leading to Karga Oasis, Salima Oasis, and Dakla Oasis. It is remarkable that Pepi II, like his predecessors, recognized the importance of trade in developing the prosperity of his kingdom. Although he ruled for many years, he managed to maintain friendly relations with neighboring regions and trading partners. This allowed Egypt to access valuable resources while maintaining its influence in the region. However, as Pepi II grew up, the kingdom began to experience increasing social and political unrest. Governors and local officials vie for power and influence. Some historians believe that Pepi II's advanced age and weakened condition may have contributed to this unrest, with some officials seeking to exploit his ill health to advance the interests of the nation. One of the most fascinating aspects of Pepi II's childhood was his rumored obsession with longevity and immortality. According to some accounts, Pepi II was so preoccupied with the idea of living forever that he smeared honey on his courtiers and let flies and insects bite him, believing this would prolong his own life. This strange behavior has led some historians to speculate that Pepi II may have suffered from mental illness or some form of cognitive impairment, although there is little concrete evidence to support this hypothesis. Pepi II, one of the few immortal pharaohs in ancient fiction. Among the surviving stories is the fascinating story of King Nefertari and General Sassanet. The Papri tell the story from the new post-Kingdom period, although it is possible that the story was written earlier. This gripping tale tells of the secret meetings of the night between King Nefertari and his military commander, General Sassanet or Siseni Pepe II. King Pepe II used to stop by his general for a few hours and then return to the palace. Many theories suggest that the revered King Pepe II was gay and once had a same-sex relationship with his loyal general, Sassanet. The story has sparked much debate among scholars, with some believing it to be a work of literary fiction or an authentic historical document. The story of King Nefertari and General Sassanet challenges our preconceived notions of ancient Egypt and reveals a more complex and nuanced society than we could have imagined. The reign of King Pepi II marked a tumultuous period. Despite his long and eventful rule, his reign was marked by political instability, economic decline, and social unrest. The once mighty old kingdom began to crumble long before the reign of Pepi II. The regional monarchs, who were supposed to represent the king, grew more influential and powerful, ushering in an era of decline. Pepi I even married a nomad's daughter and made their brother vizier. The nobility became richer and more influential during Pepi II's reign with large tombs being built in many of Egypt's major landmarks. Positions of power became hereditary, leading to a transfer of power from the central court to the regional lords. To further consolidate power, Pepi II split the role of vizier into two, for Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt, further consolidating the hierarchy of power from the royal capital, Memphis. The story of Epur and the fall of the Old Kingdom is one that has fascinated historians for centuries. At first, it was believed that Ipur was a treasury official who witnessed the decline of Egypt during the first intermediate period. The Ipur papyrus is said to depict this dark era and archaeological evidence from Syrian button seals seems to support this theory. However, recent research has shed some light on the story, 
It seems that Ipura did not discuss matters with his king as was once thought. Instead, he was talking to a god. Ipura's advice was not directed at a mortal king, but at the god Atum. After King Pepi II died, his tomb was located at the pyramid located south of Saqqara. We will be impressed by the architectural and technical feats that the ancient Egyptians achieved. The complex includes not only the king's pyramid, but also the adjacent mortuary temple decorated with intricate scenes and designs. The pyramid itself is a wonder of precision and symmetry, with a limestone and clay mortar core encased in white limestone. An interesting feature is the addition of a strip of bricks equal to the height of the enclosing wall, possibly to resemble the hieroglyphs of the pyramid or to strengthen the base of the structure against earthquakes. The king's black granite coffin is engraved with his name and title, and a covered chest is sunk in the floor. Adjacent to Pepi II's pyramid are the pyramids of his consorts, Neith and Iput, and the pyramid of Ujeptin lies to the south. Each queen's pyramid has its own temple and satellite pyramid, with Neith's pyramid being the largest and possibly the first ever built. The mortuary temple adjacent to Pepi II's pyramid is decorated with scenes depicting the king conquering chaos by stabbing a hippo. Others are carnival scenes and depictions of the king executing a Libyan leader. Despite Pepi II's long reign, his pyramid is larger than his predecessors, reaching 78.5 meters high. Unfortunately, the limestone of the pyramid has been removed and the core has collapsed, but the causeway and temple in the valley, once located on the shore of the lake, remain. This complex is a testament to the ingenuity and skill of the builders of ancient Egypt, and a reminder of the power and glory of its rulers. In short, the life of King Pepi II was a remarkable one, filled with achievements that continue to be felt in Egypt and beyond to this day. Pepi II's remarkable longevity and leadership helped establish Egypt as a dominant force in the region. But perhaps most importantly, the rule of King Pepi II marked a period of stability and prosperity for Egypt. As we continue to study and learn from ancient Egypt, we can draw inspiration from the life and achievements of King Pepi II and strive to build a world as impressive and lasting as his reign. Please consider hitting the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for your support and I can't wait to see you in the upcoming videos.